what are the techniques in identification and dating of erosion surface you probably can quickly define and explain what are erosion surfaces they are extensive they are flat at or near the base level and the importance is that they help in reconstruction of the past history analyzing and in interpreting the landscapes of the past how erosion surfaces with their features are important paleo assessed topographies identification of erosion surface is not easy okay it's not easy why because the lot of modifications they may be in accessible climate change can greatly reshape uplifted given this challenge there are scientific statistical tools that can help identify erosion surfaces and make sure that you do not use too much space here ye jo part part of the introduction hi hai not more than half the page so try writing short try writing crisp don't elaborate too much then what are the techniques one is the statistical more for metric technique there are field studies and topographic analysis there are methods related to relative dating to identify older surfaces radiometric dating these are the three more main techniques so they were one by one in in the statistical methods in the morphometric method we use spot heights altimetric histogram and we use profile plotting method because erosion surfaces are extensive so if there is high frequency of a spot height or there is higher histogram depiction or there is crowding of profile lines implies a possible erosion surface because erosion surfaces are extensive okay so so if you see this so this is some landscape this is a landscape okay which of this looks like a erosion surface whichever is more flatter whichever is more flatter which is more extensive across so in all probability this could be the erosion surface so when i am plotting so this is the sea level height above sea level height above sea level height above sea level height above sea level do you realize one thing that this height a is found here it is found here it is found here it's found here it's found here it's also here it's also here it's also here it's also here so if i plot it on a graph say height and frequency height say x meters frequency is here height is y meter frequency is here height is z frequency is here how many number of times height height called as a it's here because one particular height has many occurrences what is frequency this is the number of occurrence so this is height b height c height d this is height okay maybe this is height e so of this which height has the maximum occurrence a okay so if you plot on a height frequency curve a will show a height will show the maximum occurrence so in all probability wherever a height is present that looks like an erosion surface so this is a histogram it is another type of a uh, frequency curve this is height uh, say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 this height represents erosion surface 9 why because it has the maximum occurrence 
So essentially, spot heights and histograms have the same type of function. That's all. So whichever height has the maximum occurrence, whichever height has the maximum number of, uh, say, identification occurrences, that we can say looks like an erosion surface. And then, of course, we must add here that uh, such erosion surface identification is subject to actual confirmation after field studies. So this is graphically, but you also must confirm this on the basis of field study. Actually, you have to study this and then say, okay, go to the field and study the rocks, the landforms, and then confirm and say whether it is an erosion surface or not. Okay, so this is short three, four, five lines. How do we use histograms? Okay, line graph I can show as rectangular bars is then called as histogram. I can join the midpoint. I don't know if you have done this or not. Ultimately, this is what the histogram looks like. Okay, so this is one technique. The second is the field study. Confirmation by field study and topographic analysis. So field studies may the physical presence of some features and landforms can confirm the presence of erosion surface. For example, if it is a flat surface and a hard rock layer coexists with a soft rock layer, this is surface A, this is surface B. If there are hard rocks, this is a hard rock and this is a soft rock. If the hard rock and soft rocks are alongside each other, okay, and they have the same level of surface, so what do you think? Which of this is an erosion surface, A or B? A. So if hard and soft rocks lie alongside and along the same level, then the surface with harder rocks are more likely to be the erosion surface. The soft has eroded fast and come here. And then over millions of years, this has also eroded and come here. So of the two surfaces, which will be more older? The older surface will be the harder one. This is because we have said erosion surfaces are flat without structural or lithological control of the flatness. The surfaces that have higher stream frequency and higher drainage density, then that surface has the potential of having been eroded more. Okay, so there are two surfaces. This is one surface, another surface. There are a lot of rivers here, lot of rivers here. This has lesser rivers. The one which has more rivers, the number of rivers, do is dikha jata hai. Stream frequency, which means number of streams per unit area and drainage density, the length of the streams per unit area. You can look up page number uh, 371. There are two definitions. What are stream frequencies and what are drainage density? Stream frequency is the measure of number of streams per unit area. Whereas drainage density is the number of streams. Ek hai number of streams hai aur ek hai the total stream length. Hai. This is the length of the streams. This is number of the streams. So a surface that has a higher stream frequency, that has higher drainage density, this surface must have been eroded more than a surface that has less stream and less drainage density. Imagine this is a rock and this is another rock. This rock is hard rock and this rock is soft. The soft rock gets eroded faster. So over time, probably, what I have is this. Because soft has eroded, hard not eroded much. But if I have a surface where the hard rock and the soft rock are lying side by side, okay, this is hard rock and this is soft rock. Of these two surfaces, which is going to be older? This was the 
initial surface maybe and this was the initial surface maybe which one do you think must have taken more time to become flatter which will be older okay the hard rock will take more time to flatten off so the hard rock area and a soft rock area if they coexist alongside and both have the same elevation the hard rock is older than the soft rock that's all now another technique that we have is the profiling technique the profiling technique this is part of morphometric profiling technique kya hota hai this is a method to, to graphically depict the landscape and its features on a graph this is something like plotting of plotting of cross sections at a regular interval if this is the landscape say a mountain here a mountain here maybe there's a valley here there's a depression here maybe there's a mountain here this is the landscape i have so what we do is at regular intervals maybe intervals of 5 5 kilometers 5 5 kilometers 5 kilometers we take cross sections so along this cross section aa along the cross section x x along cross section y y we plot the heights on a graph so we take a graph paper along aa the height looks like this this is the aa profile along xx profile it looks maybe okay something like this xx profile along yy profile like it shows maybe a mountain and something else so yy profile so these are the profile graphs if all the profile graphs can be shown these are called as superimposed profile if i show only the highest point for example this is the highest point highest point highest point highest point highest i only show the highest points then i call that as composite profile this example of superimposed superimposed all the lines are shown overlapping each other if i plot only the highest elevation profile then i call this as composite but if we if we plot and depict in terms of what's visible from front to distance like say this is one mountain behind this mountain maybe this is a mountain this is another mountain or in this diagram tell me which one is in front which is behind there is a black one there is a green one there is a red one can you tell me which is in front which is behind the black is in front the red is behind how do you know this so whatever is getting hidden if you look from front towards back you don't show that okay so i am sure there is something behind this you're not showing it there is something behind this we're not showing it so if we show in such a way that the depiction is in terms of what is visible from front to distant then we call this as projected profiles so what are profiles profiles are essentially cross section lines cross section lines for relief and elevations at regular intervals on the surface the methods to graphically depict the landscape and its features on a graph like if all the lines are shown together in superimposed profiles you will not have the sense of relative depth nahi hoga in composite profiles you can only see the highest points so if if i was to plot this one if i plot only this and this and this then this is an example of composite profile i'm showing only the highest points so there are three methods of prof profile depiction there are relative profiling there is projected profiling and there is composite profiling open up page number 312 there are three examples of profiles here the catch is whichever profile graph line has maximum overlap that is the 
possible erosion surface. So erosion surface depiction ke liye the superimposed method is the best method. If I'm drawing it again, say this is one. You can see superimposition here. You can see superimposition partly here. You can see superimposition partly here. So this is in all probability the location of an erosion surface. It's part of morphometric techniques to identify which are the erosion surfaces. Have you seen this type of uh, night time? In this diagram, can you tell me what is in front and what is behind? outlines join Maybe this is a church, this is a dome, this could be in front, this is in front, this probably is in front. There's no way of knowing this. If I just draw the outlines and superimpose, we call those as composite profiles. So there are three techniques of drawing profile of a landscape. Just remember that much. So that's taken care. And the third method I said is the dating method. Dating can be relative dating. It can be absolute dating. Absolute date dating carbon-14 ka hai isotope. You also have strontium dating. You also have radium dating. Relative dating is by comparing the age of known to unknown. Okay? Like say, there are three layers of rocks. There are three layers of rocks. This is rock A, rock B, and rock C. Rock A, I know, has an age of, say, 10 million years. So what do you think? B and C, which is oldest and which is the youngest? C is the oldest. Why? This is called as the principle of superposition. If there are horizontal layers, the one which is below is older than the one which is above. So if I know the age of A as 10 million, I can safely say C is oldest, older than 10 million. So what came first has now been overlain by what comes next. This is one technique of relative dating using principle of superposition. So in reality, the identification, identification of erosion surfaces uses a mix of many techniques. No technique alone is reliable. In most cases, the conclusion needs validation by actual field study. Nevertheless, because of challenges related identification and analysis of erosion surface, historical geomorphology is not the most popular approach in modern geomorphology. Okay? Bye-bye then. Take care. Thank you. Thank you for attending.